Hi, welcome to my first physics video. This is a new physics series that I'm making and it's mainly based on IGCSE physics with the syllabus code 0625. Other students are also welcome to watch this, but I specifically made this for the 0625 syllabus. There's five blocks in this course, which are general physics, thermal physics, um, waves and electromagnetic waves electricity and magnetism, and atomic physics. So I'm starting fresh with general physics, and today we're focusing on 1.1, the first section of general physics, which is length and time. So what are length and time? I think we all know that, but let's dive in deeper into what they actually are. Length is a measurement of distance. It's how we measure the distances between objects, say, this marker that I have, and this ruler that I have here. So it's just a measure of the distance, that's what we call length. And time is a measure of the passage of events, how, how events they change in our lives. It's how our surroundings change, how we perceive our lives to be moving in time. So let's talk about some units and what I mean by fundamental units. What I mean by fundamental units is that they're not derived they're the basic, the most basic units that exist in physics and how we use them to measure the world around us. And some of these are meters and seconds that I've included here. Meters is mainly used to measure length. But say in chemistry, they might use centimeters to measure length because chemistry usually deals with smaller things. But in physics, you, you're usually looking at large things. So if you're talking about the universe, then you might even use say millions of kilometers or megameters or parsecs those are units that you usually find in astronomy or if you're talking about say microbiology and you're measuring the diameter of a virus then you'd likely be measuring in nanometers because viruses are very small or atoms which can be up to picometers of length which is a trillionth of a meter let's talk about time now Time is usually measured in seconds. We use seconds in physics. One, two, three. Or you could just look at your clock and the needle will be ticking. So how do you measure distances, one may ask. Well, you could use a ruler if you're measuring in centimeters or inches, but inches isn't commonly used in physics because we usually use SI units like meters and centimeters. So here I have this ruler you could use it to measure in centimeters. Uh, each of these gratings, the bigger ones, is the gap between is a centimeter, which is one hundredth of a meter. Or you could just use a meter rule, which is, um, it's a meter long, which is hundred centimeters long. And you could use it to measure distances that are long. You could use a meter rule for, say, like, measuring the perimeter of classroom in meters by adding the length of the dimensions of the room or if you're really talking about very tiny distances like you're talking about measuring the diameter of a lead in your pencil then you could use a micrometer screw gauge it's very accurate you can measure the distances with a micrometer to the hundredth of a millimeter you could also use a, a measuring tape it it's used for measuring really long distances. Some can even measure up to 100 meters. And they're often used to just measure distances on, say, football fields or basketball courts. So how do you measure time? You could measure time with a bunch of devices, say stopwatches, clocks, sensors. So stopwatch is the most common one. They're mostly available on phones. Or you could use a full stopwatch, which you can find at your store. But they're more accurate because they have fast response times compared to phone stopwatches in your clock app. So you could use this stopwatch that you have here to measure how long it takes for this ball from this height to fall to the ground here. You could start the stopwatch when you drop the ball from your hand at this part. And then when it hits the ground, when you hear the bang, you could press it. The button again so that it can stop so that's how you measure time that's how you measure how long it takes for the ball to drop to the ground from the height you could also use a clock if you want to measure time that is in minutes you could use you could use a clock every day from your phone app or a physical clock that you may have hung on a wall in your house you use them to measure time in your daily lives 
or you could also use a sensor which may be connected to your computer and that sensor could measure how long it takes for something to explode you wouldn't actually measure dynamite like that but say you want to measure how long a chemical reaction takes to occur you could program it to understand its surroundings what the chemical reaction looks like before it starts and then when you turn on the sensor and your computer and you carry out the reaction then you can see how long it, ch it takes for the reaction to occur by measuring the changes in in the environment of the reaction so let's say you have a spatula which has some chemical which reacts with another chemical in this beaker so if you put that chemical on the spatula into that beaker you can start the timer on your sensor and it's gonna sense the temperature on your liquid surface in the beaker or throughout the whole liquid uh, you could have sensors which check how long it takes for say fumes or gases to to come out from the fluid uh, you could check how long it takes for something to start boiling like here you could say you're boiling water you can measure with a sensor how long it takes for it to detect the water vapor and then the timer can stop on the sensor so yeah computers are more accurate but generally in physics you'd use a stopwatch in more professional terms you'd use a sensor linked to a computer and that can help you more automate your result so this is it for 1.1 general physics length and time i'll see you in the next video with 1.2 which is about motion thanks for